Welcome back. You're watching CNBC TV 18. This is the reporter's diary. Now, Biocon and Pfizer have entered into a global commercialization agreement, creating a global alliance to deliver insulin treatments worldwide. Sunanda Jessila now joins us with more details. Sunanda, what do you have? Thanks for that, Nayantara. Well, what we do know is Pfizer's side really of the deal. We still haven't heard from Biocon. That release is expected around 5.30 in a couple of minutes or so. What we do know for the moment is that Pfizer and Biocon have entered into a commercialization agreement where Pfizer will make an upfront payment of $200 million. This will be for a licensing deal for Biocon's biosimilars or insulin portfolio for diabetics treatment. Now, Bicon will also be eligible for additional payments. What will these additional payments be for? It will be for development and regulatory milestone payments of up to $150 million. Now, I'd like to point out that we understand this does not cover oral insulin. This is as we've been given to understand at the moment. Now, Biocon will also receive additional payments linked to Pfizer's sale of four insulin biosimilar products across global markets. We've been given to understand that this agreement will not include, however, India, Germany and Malaysia, where we understand that Biocon and Pfizer will have co-exclusive marketing rights. That's what we know for the moment. We'll, of course, be tracking that press conference scheduled to start at 5.30 very closely. Back to you, Nathana. Right, thanks for, Arjunanda, for joining us with all those details. We'll of course touch base with you once again once Biocon's version of the story is out. Now let's go across to Vikas Dandekar of PharmationNews.com. He joins us on the phone line for more perspective. Vikas, what do you make of this arrangement? First of all, tell us what is the potential, the market size as far as this insulin is concerned and what does this mean both for Biocon as well as for Pfizer? Uh, so, Nandara, basically, um, a number of uh, uh, biosimilars are scheduled to be launched in uh, the European market. A number of trials are actually going on uh, on insulin, and this is a big potential, about uh, maybe four to six billion dollars in all uh, of the of the total market. And then these are also for analogs of insulin, which means the glargin, which is a uh, lantus uh, uh, developed by Sanofi Aventis. Then we have Novo Nordisk. Uh, Novolog, which is Aspart, and then again we have Lispro, which is Lily's product. So these are all very big products, very big companies which have dominated uh, this insulin uh, scenario for many years. And once this, uh, the patents for all of these insulins expire, it will be a very big opportunity, which probably Pfizer doesn't want to miss out right now. So uh, the, the question is, uh, how will Pfizer share the revenue of the fact that it has already committed uh, a, a massive sum? of about $200 million. The question is, uh, Pfizer, uh, Biocon has a deal going with Bristol Myers Squibb. So there will be a couple of uh, issues there which have still not come out, maybe from Biocon's side, it will be explained later. Uh, all in all, it makes a very strong uh, uh, revenue uh, projection for Biocon. And uh, of course, there will be a lot of price issues because a number of companies are going to be launched. So th those, are, those are a couple of doubts that need to be cleared. Vikas, why do you think that Pfizer has actually chosen to go ahead with Biocon for this arrangement? Okay, so, you know, Biocon has developed a strong portfolio of uh, these insulin and insulin analogs. As I pointed out earlier that there are only three or four companies which have been dominating this insulin scenario. Novo Nordic, Sanofi, Aventis, and uh, Eli Lilly. And going forward, uh, you know, Pfizer being the largest company in the world and diabetic uh, uh, population is also going to rise. Uh, you know, earlier in, in uh, about 2007, Pfizer actually failed in its uh, uh, oral insulin ambition when Exubra was actually called back because of certain adoption issues. So uh, the, the ambition for Pfizer to be a strong player in diabetes remains uh, that way. Probably, you know, insulin is also something that is very close to Biocon. Uh, they are also developing their uh, IN-105, which is the oral insulin. They have filed the IND and phase 3 data is still awaited. So going forward, there is a lot of potential that Biocon has in this particular segment. And uh, probably this is what opens the doors for them. So this is the first kind of arrangement for Biocon as far as BMS is concerned? No, BMS, uh, you know, Biocon has a very strong uh, collaboration with BMS. They are working together on, on a large number of preclinical candidates through their Bangalore R&D centers. And they also have some work going on insulin as well. Uh, the, the, that, that will be a big question to be answered as to how uh, the, the model is going to be shared uh, if uh, BMS is also one of the parties 
to be you know uh, playing a role in in this insulin opportunity also biosimilars is a wider uh, opportunity for biocon because mylan has also got to deal with uh, biocon so there are a number of big players which have got gravitated towards uh, biocon so uh, th those questions are still a little uh, vague so we we have to actually check on the final details once uh, biocon comes out with its uh, statement Right, thanks, Dr. Vikas, for joining us here on CNBC TV. It's good as always to have you on the show. So that's the latest arrangement by Biocon and Pfizer. Biocon will, of course, be holding a press conference shortly and be rest assured we will cut in live to that edition of Reporters Diary. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Tech Toys is coming up next.